Miyabi coat from Kamikaze Collection. Ceramic coating, something that we've been using here in our shop regularly for the better part of seven years or so. Why do we find it so appealing? Well, stay tuned. We're going to go into all those details next. Hi, I'm Todd Cooperwriter with Esoteric. Like I said, we're here today to talk about Miyabi Coat from Kamikaze Collection. Now, what is it? Who is it for? How to use it? We're gonna go over all that stuff. I wanna make sure that you stay till the end of the video because first we're gonna talk about everything, then we're gonna go back here to our car behind me and we're gonna go through the application process so you completely understand how to get the most out of Miyabi Coat. Now it's kind of funny that we're sitting here doing this. It's uh, April of 2022 when we're shooting this. Wes back on the other side of the camera. That was the very first video that we shot together was this product way back then. Wes was still a senior in high school. My presentation wasn't down yet. Lighting and audio wasn't that uh, great yet, but yet that's one of the most uh, watched videos that we have. So fast forward to now, here's the funny thing we're still using Miyabi Coat from Kamikaze Collection. It is still basically the same product. Typical Japanese fashion, you know, they're always making tiny little tweaks, but if you were to use a bottle from seven years ago and you use a bottle from now, you would swear it's the same product. The use and everything is the same. And that is one of the biggest features of Miyabi Coat, it's ease of installation. Now, if you've been here on the Esoteric channel for a while, you know I talk a bit about ease of installation or ease of use when it comes to products. That is so important, particularly for us here at Esoteric. You know, we do a lot of cars. You can see behind me, there's a lot of cars in here. These aren't staged, this is just a normal day. We can have days, you know, today is a Friday. Um, we're doing a lot of coating on Fridays. We can have five cars that we're coating in here. And having that ease of installation makes a big, big difference. It makes things more efficient. But that's not just the detailer in me, that's the enthusiast in me talking to. You know, you're at home, you wanna look for a coating that you can use uh, on your car. It's gonna be easy to use. That is important because the last thing you wanna do is spend all weekend working and prepping and doing all these different convoluted stages. You want something that can go efficiently and something that's going to work extremely well. Let me get into some details about the product itself. This is one that's designed just for paint. It's not designed for plastics. It's not designed for wheels. It's not designed for glass. It is a paint coating. Uh, here in the shop, most of the vehicles that we coat or most of the vehicles that come in for a coating package get Miyabi Coat. Let, let, me, let me back up a minute and, and, and let's talk about that one for just a second. You've seen the cars that we do here at Esoteric. Yes, we do a lot of super high-end cars. We do you know, a lot of Porsches, a lot of Teslas, Corvettes, Mercedes, and we have higher levels of coating available to us, but Miyabi is what we use the most. It's what we sell the most. Why is that? because it's very effective, it looks incredible, and it's super easy to use. With that, you know, we're doing a lot of cars here. We prefer to use this because of the easy use, because of how well it works. Now, it, it, are, are there cars that we would use something else on versus Miyabi? Well, first of all, it comes down to what the customer wants. Here at Esoteric, we're all about the good, better, best. Uh, we offer different coatings at different levels, depending on what the customer wants to go with. All right, now what colors am I going to use this on? Well, the colors that really stand out with brilliance, your, your pure blacks, your pure reds, non-metallics, uh, your silvers, colors like that are really gonna work well with Miyabi Coat, anything that, that has a lot of brilliance to it already, that's when a product like this is gonna come into play because it takes that brilliance, kicks it up a couple levels. Now, when you're talking about metallic blues, even some of the metallic reds or darker ones. Let's say uh, you've got a green GT3 RS. That's where I like the ISM coat because it has more of a you know, warm, wet, carnauba-like uh, glow to it. So it accentuates that kind of color, that kind of looks. Now, one of the other nice things about uh, Miyabi Coat is it is a one layer product. You don't have to do multiple coats. Can you do multiple coats? Absolutely. 
but one coat is gonna last you uh, that effective life, 18 to 24 months. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you know what I mean by effective life. Effective life is how long it's working for you, how long it's providing long-term looks and self-cleaning properties. It doesn't matter theoretically how long it will last, how long is that effective life. Coatings are not for scratch resistance, you know, high heat, uh, um, crazy chemical resistance like I see some people talk about, no. What does a coating do? It does two things, it provides you long-term good looks, and it provides you ease of maintenance. How long is it still providing that? Well, this is gonna be in the 18 to 24 month with a single layer. You do two layers, you're gonna get a little bump in durability, you're gonna get a little bump in looks. You know, that's what it is with coatings. One plus one doesn't equal two, one plus one equals about 1.1. You get a little bit more out of it. But if you don't feel like doing multiple, multiple coats, you don't have to and it's gonna work fantastic. Now, speaking of multiple coats, uh, how much time in between? Put on your first coat, give it about an hour, go in and do your second coat. As with all coatings, give it about 24 hours before uh, the surface gets wet and about a week before you wash the vehicle. That is going to uh, allow it to completely cure, completely dry and not harm the finish. Okay, speaking of the finish, what is this coating like? Some people prefer to have a nice slick finish to their coating. That's not what Miyabi is. Miyabi has more of a, just a, a, a raw paint kind of feel. It doesn't mean that it's, it's good, it's bad, it's indifferent. It's just the type of material or type of coating that it is. You wanna add slickness to it, well that's where your coating maintenance product is going to come into play whether you're using an overcoat from a, a Kamikaze collection or something like Cosmic Spritz from Polish Angel, that will add some slickness if that's what you're into. Okay, one of the key aspects of applications, what makes Miyabi so easy to work with is the amount of time that it can sit on the panel. You know, we've talked about products before that all you can do is one tiny little section, you apply it, you remove it, you move on to the next section. Well each time you have to start and stop, that just adds a lot of time to the process. Really important for the detailer. Uh, with this, you can do a third of the car, then go and do your removal. I've had times where we put it on a surface, we uh, use our stopwatch, wait 10 minutes, go to remove it, it removes just as easy. We have people here at the Elite Detailer Academy, part of that uh, training, we have a full day dedicated to ceramic coatings. Guys who have used other products out there, we always use Miyabi in class, and they are simply blown away by how much time we can leave it on the surface and how easy it comes off of the surface. This is a reference level product when it comes to ease of use, ease of application, ease of removal. All right, speaking of that, what we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, um, set up camera back here on the car behind me. We're gonna walk through the installation processes to make it easy for you as well. All right, now we're ready for application of the car. You've watched any of our videos before on coatings. We know we go through the process, getting the car cleaned up, fully washed. I'd hit it with Gion iron decontamination. It gets inside. We're gonna thoroughly wipe it down with our Gion prep. This has already been prepped, but I'll take you through the process real quick. You know, we're gonna get a nice liberal application of prep. When it comes to getting the surface ready, you know, you can't use too much prep, but you can use too little. This is to make sure that we don't have any kind of remnants of anything else on the surface, getting it squeaky clean, because the better job we do of prepping the surface, the better our coating is going to bond, and the better it bonds, the more durability we're gonna get out of it. So it's really important to prep uh, that surface uh, properly. Now, I've got my block and my applicator. It comes with the Miyabi coat. We do have other kind of applicators uh, available. We just did a video on that if you wanted to use a different kind of applicator. I've got my coating, I've got my two towels uh, that I'm gonna have. One thing we wanna make sure that we do, when we open up the bottle, we wanna make sure we clean around it and there's no little, basically looks like little glass shards around the edge. You get one of those in your applicator, you're gonna scratch up your surface. So uh, visually inspect it to make sure that you have nothing on there. And when we're done, we're gonna clean everything off again, 
before we store it again. Uh, and then also we're using our pipettes here. I prefer using pipettes as opposed to the little dropper. It's a lot less messy and it gives me exact control over just how much product that I've got going onto my applicator. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take coating, I'm gonna start this off. I'm gonna do you know three or four lines on here just to get uh, some good coverage. And I'm gonna think about this hood, I'm gonna break it in half and I'm gonna start off, I'm just gonna put one row of coating there. That way uh, I'm gonna continually catch more as I go back and forth. And I just have a little bit of overlap here as I'm going across to make sure I get nice, complete, even coverage. Now on this car here, I've got a lot of curvature in this hood, which is gonna mean that I need to be extra careful to make sure that I'm getting all of it covered. You know, one of the other kind of applicators that, that we have, the, the microfiber ones, they would do a little bit better job of conforming to these areas, but I can already see some of this where I missed it. We'll go back and we're gonna catch that. And there's, there's not really, it's not like rocket science as we're trying to figure this out. Um, it's just making sure that we have all of the areas covered. Get around here as well. Now what I like to do is go right back over those areas the same way I'm not doing a cross hatch pattern. And this just ensures, you know, I didn't put any more product onto the applicator, but this just ensures a nice coverage. I wanna to try to keep the thickness as consistent as I possibly can. And this also ensures that I didn't miss any little spots. On a silver car like this, it's kind of hard to see so you need to catch the light right, or if you've got a flashlight or something, your Rupus pen light, you can look around to try to make sure that you didn't miss any spots and you can go back uh, over it to make sure that you got complete coverage. It's really that simple. And normally here, I would go on and do the other half of the hood. Like I said, I could do a bit more than that. I can do the hood, I can do the bumper, and I can do, say, the, uh, the trunk lid, then go back and do removal. I could stop here, take a coffee break if I wanted to. Uh, come back, wipe it off, it's going to be simple. Now, when you're in the heat of the summer, the higher the humidity, the shorter the time that you have between application and removal. So keep that in mind, you know, if you're going to apply in August and you got a lot of humidity, maybe do just one or two panels at a time. If you find it's getting a little bit grabby on removal, then the next section you do, just do a smaller section. We're leaving it on for, let's call it five to 10 minutes before we remove it. You don't leave it on for multiple hours or anything like that. Uh, leaving it on longer is only gonna cause you problems. It's not going to uh, cause it to bond better with the surface. Okay, what if you run into a situation where you did leave it on a little bit too long, you got distracted, phone call, customer coming in, whatever, uh, and you go back to wipe it off and it's you know, become a little sticky or grabby. Well, the best way to handle something like that is going to be to apply more product, go right over top of it, immediately do your removal on it. That should take care of any of those issues that you have. All right, we're going to fast forward and pretend that we have given the amount of time needed on this, and I'll go through the removal process. So I've got my two towels. I've got a short nap towel. I've got a longer uh, nap towel. I'm gonna use the short nap towel first. I keep it folded in force. And I'm just gonna do small circular motions as I remove it. And this stuff removes ridiculously easy. Uh, really no pressure on this whatsoever. And you can see the surface as you're working on it. Um, and you should be able to see it being removed. Now, as I'm doing this, I've talked about in all the other coating related videos, I'm pushing some of this coating onto adjacent areas as I'm removing. So these, this panel here, this panel here. So I need to make sure when I come back with my secondary wipe, I extend that wiping area to make sure I have everything off of there. So I'm gonna go back with my secondary towel and this is just gonna get any final remnants off of the surface. It's really easy, 
little to no pressure on it. That first wipe should get rid of, you know, 75, 80, if not more percent of all of the coating that's, that's on there. And this just gets the rest. Now you might be wondering why are we putting coating on and then taking it off? Well, what's happened while that product is sitting on there, it's bonding to the surface. When you're going back and you do your removal, you're just getting whatever is left. You're not removing the stuff from the surface. Now you get a lot of other uh, coatings on the market, particularly the cheap ones that are out there. You open up the bottle, your eyes start watering. It has such a bad chemical uh, smell to it. That's a big concern for me, for my employees here uh, at the shop. I don't want that kind of chemistry uh, in there. If I feel I have to wear a respirator uh, when using it, I've got no desire to use that kind of product whatsoever. Like I said with the Kamikaze uh, collection coatings, you get like no smell to it whatsoever. Um, it's just in the chemistry that is used. Really, it's as simple as that. From here, I would go on and I would continue doing the rest of my application. If I wanted to do a second application, like I said, I wait for about an hour, come back and do it. One thing about that though, when you come back to do a second application, you're gonna change out your applicators. You know, when you're done with this, this gets pitched, you have a fresh one that you put it on. Also your towels. You know, those two towels are gonna to be good for the removal of one coat on the entire car. If you wanna go do another coating or another layer of it, grab two fresh towels. Those towels, the applicators get pitched afterwards, just the cost of doing business or the cost of applying it. If you uh, left those around, you run the risk and they turn hard, it could scratch something out. You know, a lot of people say, well, can't you just repurpose it for whatever? Is a couple bucks on towels make that much of a difference? that you want to risk scratching something. Now, one bottle of Miyabi, on most vehicles, that's going to be uh, good enough for two coats. You'll probably still have some left over. Sometimes people in the beginning, they use too much product. You know, if you're applying and you notice it running or dripping, you're using too much product. Uh, but even a car this size, I can get too easily get two coats out of that one bottle, probably have a little bit left over. And, and how long is that bottle gonna last after it's opened? Well, you wanna use that up within a month or two and a way to kind of slow down that process. Once you open up the bottle, it wants to cure. We're gonna take one of our towels we're getting ready to throw away. We're gonna clean off the bottle really well. We're gonna clean out the cap really well. You can put it in a refrigerator. You can put it in a cool, dry place. Don't keep it out in the garage. That will allow it to last a little bit longer if you've got another car you wanna do uh, down the road. If you only wanna do one coat and you feel that you're never going to coat anything else, it's probably gonna go uh, bad on you. So keep that in mind. Maybe get a buddy together, uh, uh, buy the coating, coat both of your cars, use up the entire bottle. Well, hopefully that gives you a much better idea of how to use the product, what it is, who it's for, why we like it so much here at Esoteric and use it on so many of our customers' cars. If you have experience with the coating and you wanna share with others, leave it in the comment section below. You have additional questions about the product or about the installation process, leave it below. I'm the one who goes in and answers all the questions. As always, we appreciate you hanging out with us here on the Esoteric channel. Thanks, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.